Hello, I'm Joseph Junta, the music director and conductor of the Des Moines Symphony. As we continue to practice social distancing, I am once again in my home studio trying to stay connected to you, our very important Symphony family, through our DMSO at Home series. Over the last three weeks, I have spoken briefly about the symphonies of Rafe von Williams, Anton Bruckner, and Ludwig von Beethoven. This week, I have chosen to answer one of the most frequent questions I get. How do I choose music for a Des Moines Symphony concert? Programming is very personal. Every conductor has their own style, tastes, and specialties. With over 350 years of music to choose from, the orchestral repertoire is certainly a vast playground. There are three criteria I examine most immediately when I consider music to program. First, I want music that will challenge and inspire our wonderful musicians. Second, I want music that has audience appeal and will support active and engaged listening. And finally, choosing music that I love helps me inspire the musicians to produce first-rate, memorable concerts. But there are logistics to factor in. I believe great performances can overcome bad programming, but great programming cannot overcome bad performances. So, knowing the orchestra's strengths, style, concepts of sound, and traditions these are important aspects to crafting a successful program and performance. Things like the size of the stage and hall are additional considerations. And let's face it, sometimes we have to factor in the budget. Can we afford 15 extra musicians for the Mahler Sixth Symphony, or five additional percussionists for Ravel's Daphne and Chloe? Can we afford to pay the piccolo, bass clarinet, English horn or contrabassoon for 10 blissful and memorable notes on one piece and then have he or she sit out the rest of the concert? These are very real questions that need to be answered in the real world. Programming must always fit the occasion. Pieces that are triumphant, celebratory, and familiar would fit special events like an opening or closing of a season. Pieces like Tchaikovsky's Symphony 4 or 5, Mahler's Symphony 1, Beethoven Symphony 5 and 9 all come to mind. Variety is a welcome ingredient for a successful program. A Symphony of Haydn, followed by one by Beethoven, seems too similar in style. But Haydn, followed by, say, a Symphony of Shostakovich or Prokofiev, would probably interest a modern audience more. Sometimes I'll search for relationships between pieces, and other times I'll highlight their contrasting styles. And sometimes I can do both those things at once. For example, the Mozart Symphony No. 38, inspired by the great city of Prague, followed by a work of a native son of Czechoslovakia, like Dvorak or Smetana. What a music lover's delight. Composer relationships also have merit for developing successful programs. A von Weber overture, followed by the German modern composer Hindemith piece Symphonic Metamorphosis on themes of von Weber, or say a Strauss waltz opener that is contrasted by a Mahler symphony inspired by the ingenious Waltz King. Then there's what we call in the business the age-old R-squared programming, the pairing of Richard Wagner and Richard Strauss, both German Romantic composers whose styles are vastly different from one another, but both very appealing. Programs should also have a trajectory, one piece leading to the next, and illuminating the relationship of old and new, familiar and unfamiliar. Using my programs for the upcoming season as examples, a work written in 2013 by amazing living composer Anna Klein, followed by the one-of-a-kind triple concerto of Beethoven, leads right into the Fifth Symphony of Mahler. Or how about unknown American and Pulitzer Prize winning composer George Walker's 1947 piece, Lyric for Strings, followed by a less performed Beethoven Piano Concerto and the famous Fourth Symphony of Tchaikovsky. These are examples of how old, new, familiar, and unfamiliar music can be assembled to both stretch and satisfy the listener. Finally, one must consider length. It is no surprise that the societal habits generated by technology and the pop culture of today impact our attention span. I feel strongly that modern programs need to embrace this and should aim to be less than two hours in length. The phenomenon of perceived time versus real time in live music 
is often overlooked. Ten minutes of atonal or modern music that lacks a traditional melody may well feel like a small eternity, but a well-played 50-minute programmatic Strauss tone poem may fly by as the music takes you seamlessly from one discovery to another. So perceived time is a better guide for a modern program. In conclusion, finding just the right balance of familiar, unfamiliar, old and new pieces that create exciting, enriching and appealing programs is really the fuel that makes the engine run. With the proper programming, the entire organization will flourish and represent itself to the world as a serious and artistically satisfying orchestra. Renowned soloists will want to perform with us, and the best musicians from Iowa and beyond will audition for the opportunity to perform great orchestral music. Best of all, audiences will become accustomed to attending concerts knowing that each time a journey awaits them like no other. I hope you've enjoyed today's DMSO listening room as part of our DMSO at Home series. As always, this will be posted on dmsymphony.org and linked on the orchestra's social media channels with hashtag DMSO at home. If you're interested in listening to some music, I've included a few links of my favorite performances of some of the pieces I referenced earlier. You can listen right on the webpage after watching this video. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, stay well.